Hey guys, welcome to week three of Procrastination No More Cookbook Authors Training. This week we're going to talk about finding your voice. We of course have Sean and Jen. Jen, how is uh, how's Aunt Carlene? Aunt Carlene is great. Uh, Easter's coming up, which means we're going to be looking forward to some delicious ambrosia, which I love. She's famous for that. What is, what is ambrosia? Oh, it's um, fruit, marshmallows, pecans, uh, probably Jello. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. Coconut. It's got Ooh, coconut. Like, uh-huh. It's got okay. pineapple. Uh, Sean, am I missing anything? <laughs> Does yours have orange in it? Orange yeah, size? mandarin oranges. Uh-huh. Not yeah. the real. Nothing. Everything's out of a can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's so delicious. Oh, gosh. I love it. That sounds awesome. All right, Sean. Well, we are excited to jump in today. And yeah. Learn about yeah, our voice. Yeah. So um, I wanted to ask you... Um, you have a title for your book, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, have you started thinking about how you're going to write your stories and how you're going to share Aunt Carlene's voice in the book? A little bit. So her her tone, her um, her presence is very nurturing and very. Um, encouraging and kind and so uh, there's like a lot of terms of endearment she uses so I want to try to capture some of her language in real life Mm -hmm. when I'm uh, recounting stories in the book and and maybe even in the descriptions of the of the recipes when you know right in the directions of how to create the uh, recipes or create the meals yeah yeah I think that that's um, really important because You know, from what you've said, you know, people have gone to school and learned from her. And they probably have that voice in their head when they're making muffins or whatever. And Uh it'd be cool to, like, pick up the book and read it and kind of feel like they're hearing her voice again. Mm -hmm. Um, And so there are different ways that you can do that. Um, And then also, you know, she's a teacher. And you don't want the book, even though it's instructional, to be dry. Yeah. You know, right. and it sounds like she uses a lot of, you know, warm terms mm-hmm. and language and tries to make people feel comfortable and loved. And yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. So it'd be cool to put that in the book. So there are several different ways you can do that um, where you can just kind of weave your story and mm-hmm. your voice throughout the whole book. And that's why at the beginning we talked about who is your audience and why are they using the book Mm -hmm. and that way you can kind of think about every single element of the book and weaving that story and narrative and all those good things throughout the whole thing so when it comes to telling your story um one of the first places you can do it of course is your title you have a title cooking cooking with carlene great okay (laughs) so you know that's what people want okay Mm -hmm. and then um have you outlined your chapters did you use the the um Proposal Builder to outline your yes, chapters? Yes, I did. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, and so how are your chapters named now? Well, I don't have as creative a names as I want to have mm-hmm. yet. I mm-hmm. think that I, what I'm hoping is when I start documenting some of my stories, the chapter titles will kind of evolve from the stories I'm putting mm-hmm. in there mm-hmm. and, and will hopefully inspire a little bit, something more creative than like muffins. <laughs> you know? Right, right, right. Uh, so yeah, you can totally do that. I think that's a great place just to kind of, you know, that table of contents is one of the first pages. And so it kind of gets people, you know, in, in anticipation. That's a point of anticipation. We can kind of signal what's coming and kind of already signal your voice. Um, so you can really have fun with it. You know, like there's the traditional ways of like, you know, meal like breakfast lunch dinner um you know or you know like if you're doing a technique book there's like you know baking steaming roasting you know or you know things like that but you can really have fun with it too like um i've been working on a family cookbook and so um and it's kind of like my recipes and so i really kind of had fun with the things that i really love Mm -hmm. like i have a chapter for breakfast and brunch and um my chapter title is brunch the best meal of the week yeah. You know, because that's my opinion, and it kind of gives you some fun. Um, or I really love flourless chocolate cakes, mm-hmm. and I collect flourless chocolate cake recipes. And I have a chapter that's just all flourless chocolate cakes. Like, you, you normally it would be like desserts, but mine's just a chapter <laughs> of flourless chocolate cakes. You know, so um, you can really have fun with the chapter titles. You do want to signal you know, what it is so people know what they're getting, but you can have fun with it. So that's one place to Mm -hmm. have fun. Um, The other thing is the head notes, or each recipe has a little introduction, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Have you started working on those? 
Not yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's like a common place that um, a lot of people buy cookbooks just to read them. And um, they love to read those head notes or that little introduction that's like a couple of lines right in front of a recipe. Um, So that's another great place to tell your story. Um, A lot of times that head note is used to to give people tips about the recipe or, you know, different ways to cook it or, you know, shortcuts or how to, you know, but you can also use it to talk about, you know, you know, this is like the first thing that people, you know, cooked when they went to Aunt Carlene's class or, you know, you can use it, you know, for different things like that. that. Yeah. So very cool. Um, Another thing that you can do is um, put in um, stories throughout the book and it'll help give some visual pacing, Mm -hmm. you know, to have like a story and maybe Mm -hmm. it has like some of the historical pictures that you have of you know your family and Aunt Carlene and your yeah. community. Um, I just had an idea, maybe pulling yearbook photos. Oh, that would be so her, fun! Like, yeah. In the classroom, that would be so cool. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. So yeah, you could do that, and then it would kind of give. You know, like cause sometimes cookbooks can get kind of recipe photo, recipe photo, recipe yeah. photo, you know, mm-hmm. and you can kind of shake it up a bit by having some stories in there and some pictures. Yeah. So you could do like some of those old pictures and write, you know, just write a story. It doesn't have to be long, but it can add some voice. And Right. Maybe have one of our students submit stor- a story. About that'd be awesome. Favorite, oh, that would be so you know? cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm loving all these ideas. Yeah, you know, and then so now when you start doing this, your your cookbook is kind of becoming a world mm-hmm. that people can just kind of escape into. Right. So that's right. really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one of the other places that you can put your voice into into your cookbook is actually in the recipes. Like the recipes don't have to be kind of like this methodical you know, instructions, like, you know, you do want it to be that, like you want people to be able to cook successfully what you're trying to, you know, the Mm -hmm. recipe that you're sharing, but it doesn't have to be boring and clinical. It can be another place where you can share your voice. Mm -hmm. Um, So one of the ways that I love to teach this is um, in most, a lot of cookbooks have roast chicken recipes. And so I like to gather a bunch of roast chicken recipes and compare them side by side. So I have four cookbook authors here on the screen. Um, There's Nigella Lawson and Jamie Oliver, Anthony Bourdain, and Julia Child. And all of them have done roast chicken recipes. Um, And I mean, a roast chicken is very simple to do. You know, you end up with a roast chicken. It's not hard. But each of these authors has a different way of telling you how to roast a chicken, right? And so we're going to take a look at this. Now, if you like, if this inspires you and you have other cookbook authors that you love, just go pull your cookbooks and take a look at how they tell you how to roast a chicken. And you'll see everybody has a different style and a different voice. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think these four authors have very different voices. So let's kind of take a look at how they approach roasting a chicken. So again, recipe instructions do not have to be boring. You definitely want them to get people to a great finished dish, but they can also be a place to have fun and read. Okay, so use your voice. So let's look at Anthony Bourdain. Okay, so um, you know he was known for his um, you know very kind of um, um, just kind of really kind of off the cuff style, you know, um, and very honest, you know. Um, so his and this is from his book Les All, um, and he has a roast chicken, or it's actually in French, so it's a pou- a poulet roti. Um, and he says in the recipe, okay, now I'm not going to try and explain how to truss a chicken with twine as much fun as that is. Here's a shortcut instead. First, lie on your back on the floor, put your knees together and draw them both up to your chest with your arms. Press them against your chest. You should look pretty funny down there, but that's exactly the position I want you to put your chicken in. Knees up, ass out. <laughs> okay? So have you ever read that in another cookbook? No. Is that, I mean, is that how you learned how to read? That is like totally Anthony Bourdain. Mm-hmm. You will never forget how to put your chicken in a pan, right? Right, right, right. Okay? So that's great. That's his voice, you know, and it's memorable. It's funny. Um, and like you will learn how to put a chicken in a pan without twine. That's, I mean, you can't forget that. Okay, so let's look at another author. So this is Nigella Lawson, and she's kind of known for having a very sensual style. So her, her, this is from her recipe, um, and this is from her book, How to Eat. 
And uh, it says, if you know you've got an inferior bird in front of you, cook it for the first hour breast side down. This means you don't at the end have quite the glorious effect of the swelling burnished breast. The chicken will have more of a flapper's bosom, flat but fleshy, but the white meat will, white meat will be more tender because all the fats and juices will have oozed their way into it. So again, it's like very descriptive. It's mm -hmm. very Nigella. Yeah. Um, it gives you a lot of visual references um, that you can't forget, you yeah. know. And a it's very. Bosom. I know, right? <laughs> and I actually do roast my chicken that way. Like yeah. I start out like never done that. Yeah, because wow. all the juices kind of rush yeah. into the into the chicken. The yeah, yeah um, but you know that's. You know, and that's kind of what it looks like. It kind of looks flat and smushed, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it's really juicy. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, so that's uh, that's Nigella's voice. So let's take a look at Julia Child, okay? Um, and Julia Child, she really wanted Americans to get French cooking right, and she wrote out very detailed instructions, like. Her uh, French baguette recipe, it only has four ingredients, but it's a 10 page recipe. Gosh. Like she was that detailed. Wow. So this is how she talks about roasting chicken. Indications that the chicken is almost done are a sudden rain of splutters in the oven, a swelling of the breast and slight puff of the skin. The drumstick is tender when pressed and can be moved in its socket. So she's giving you all these cues so that way you know you've got like, she's telling you what to listen for, what does it look like, what does it feel like when you, you know. So she's giving you all these cues and she does that throughout her book. Like she gives you multiple, you know, cues that you can mm -hmm. see and smell and, you know, what does it look like, what does it feel like, you know, all of that. So that's Julia Child's approach. Again, very Julia. Okay, so let's look at Jamie Oliver's. This is the last one. This is how he roasts chicken. So you've watched The Naked Chef. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and um, this is from his book, Cook with Jamie. Um, and it's, uh, when you get down to the fussy bits, just use your fingers to pull all the meat off and turn the chicken over to get that tasty, juicy bits from underneath. You should be left with a stripped carcass and a platter full of lovely meat that you can serve with your piping hot gravy and gorgeous roast veg. Doesn't that sound mm -hmm. like the way he talks on the, it does. the show? Uh -huh. The yeah. juicy bits. Yeah, and the lovely meat, yeah. and you know all the fussy bits. You know, it right. sounds exactly. So you can see, you know, like all four of these authors have captured voice in their recipe. Like it's not the head note; it's in the recipe, and I think that makes a cookbook much more fun to read. So, do you think you could do that with Carlene's recipes? I think so. Okay. I think so because she she has you know she's. Purely Tennessee, you know, and, mm -hmm. and like I say, uses a lot of terms of endearment and sort of um, southern terms, you mm -hmm. know. And I mm -hmm. think that some of that language I can I can try to weave into, you know, um, how we're describing the recipes. Cool. I think I look forward to it. Yeah. So you know, you're not getting off this week without some homework. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, neither are you guys. So this week. It's everyone's job to get your copy done. You need to go through. You need to name those chapters. Get creative. Go through your recipes. Um, if you use We Type It, you can go in and edit. We'll, we'll give you a short demo of how to do that. Um, you can edit your recipes, add some tone, add some voice to it. Mm -hmm. um, maybe add a few stories into your cookbook. Decide if you want to do a uh, about the author page and a dedication. Um, so you got you got, you know it's a fun week. Yeah, it's coming yeah, together. Yeah. 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 yeah, definitely awesome. Okay, guys. So we're actually gonna stop now and then we're going to have Caroline um, come back on and do a quick demo on using the designer, adding those story pages, um, editing maybe a few of the recipes, um, and get you guys ready to have your homework done. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, y'all. Hey, guys. This is Caroline. I'm here with Jen. Hi. So we're just going to um, add a story page and a couple other things to Jen's cookbook. Um, so here's our cover. So we just uh, use the arrow to flip a couple pages. So first, uh, when you create a cookbook, it automatically has a dedication page. Um, so we'll just go ahead and click edit, go to the text tab, and we've got Jen's dedication already typed. Jen, thanks for typing everything in. It's of course. So if I didn't have a dedication, would my dedication page just be blank or? Um, you could delete it if you uh, didn't want it. Okay. So yeah, so we'll paste that in. That looks good. Hit save. But yeah, if you didn't want the dedication page, mm -hmm. you just hit that red trash can icon. Got it. Um, okay, so now we're gonna add your story page. Okay. Click the plus sign. You want it after the dedication page. Yes. Uh -huh. And story page. So you've got a couple layout options. If you um, had a photo that goes with your story, you can add it 
that or story continued, that just means it doesn't have a title on that page. Um, go to the text tab. Just gonna copy paste because it's easy peasy. Do that. Copy your story. Paste it in there. Is there any problem copying and pasting from like a Word document? Um, no, shouldn't be any issues. Okay. Um, if you had anything f funky like with a bad character or something like that, sometimes things don't translate, uh, you'll see a little warning. Like the text would turn yellow and uh, it will tell okay. you. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, it looks like everything's good. Looks good. And then you had a photo you wanted to yeah. add, right? Uh -huh. I want a photo page, please. Awesome. So after photo page, and we've got different options. So that's just photo, two photos, and then these have captions. So I think this okay. one yeah, is going to work well. Um, on the text tab, you could add a uh, table contents entry. So if you wanted to say, like some people add a recipe image. Mm -hmm. So if you want that title to show up in the table of contents, you can add that there. Um, but we've got your photo caption right here. Paste that in there. Let's put that on the next line. The picture, oh my gosh. Yep. <laughs> Me passed out with a chicken leg. That's hilarious. Oh my gosh, I love it. Um, so by default, it's going to fit it to the space, but uh -huh. if you wanted it to be the full width, okay. you hit the fill image button. I or... like that, but I want the chicken leg to show. So oh, how okay. would I get the chicken leg? So you can just click right here oh, and drag okay. it up. Shift it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that, tell me when. Is that yeah, good? That looks great. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Full awesome. chicken bone. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Okay, super cute. So yeah. you're all set there, and okay. then you just click save. And there you are. Hey, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's Thank amazing. you so much. You're this welcome. Was easy. Yeah.